Oh, say, can you make it through this list? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 national anthem performance fails. For this list, we've chosen performances where singers mangled the Star Spangled Banner or O Canada, or wrote their own lyrics. Number 20, Shaka Khan. What is it about the NBA All-Star Game and ghastly anthem renditions? For 2020, Fergie passed the torch to Shaka Khan. Who's broad stripes and bright stars? The R&B singer is known for her powerful vocals, but no one was ready for this. Singing at a snail's pace, Shaka Khan launches into runs that would make even triathletes exhausted. Hitting notes that audiences previously did not know existed, her performance was swiftly dunked on, drawing comparisons to both Fergie and Uncle Bobby from Proud Family. What so Despite Magic Johnson's praise, the internet was quick to lump this performance in with the worst anthems in history. Yeah! Number 19, Josh Groban and Flea. Sometimes polar opposites come together to make something new and incredible. Other times you get whatever this was. Who's broad stripes and bright stars? For the 2010 BCS National Championship game, Josh Groban and Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers got together to perform the national anthem. And the a strange pairing to say the least, with Josh staying committed to his operatic style of singing and Flea accompanying him on bass. Their version was slow and seemed stilted, despite a drummer kicking in to liven it up. And while it wasn't the worst rendition we've ever heard, it definitely left us with more questions than answers. Namely, why? Number 18, Victoria Zarlenga. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. Technical difficulties can be an anthem singer's worst nightmare. A 2012 soccer match between the USA and Scotland was the setting for this pitchy performance, which had fans gasping and athletes staring at each other in amazement. Although Victoria Zarlenga rocked the diva finger and looked like the bell of the ball, her voice strained just enough to resemble a dying animal. To her credit, the singer managed to keep the universe in order by nailing the lyrics, and blamed the earplug-inspiring vocal on poor auditory perception. Number 17, Aaron Lewis. Your eyes and ears will be forever stained by this rendition of America's Anthem. Aaron Lewis, the lead singer of the aforementioned Alterna Metal Band, and now a country music crooner, went lyrically rogue at Game 5 of the 2014 World Series. But so proudly we hail. You'd think that such a self-consciously uber patriot would like have remembered the words to the most iconic song in the country's repertoire. But no, he done goofed, replacing At the Twilight's Last Gleaming with a wrongly placed We're So Gallantly Streaming. Maybe he should have had the lyrics tattooed on his neck? Number 16, Michael Bolton. The Boston Red Sox were a year away from World Series glory in 2003, and their intense rivalry with the New York Yankees caused fans to tremble with anticipation. One glorious American hero named Michael Bolton temporarily calmed the storm and brought the country together with this confused rendition of the national anthem during the ALCS that year. Like so many singers unable to remember America's most famous song, Bolton took to the hand, closed his eyes, and belted away in a star-spangled slumber. Number 15, Clint Bowers. There must be something truly intoxicating to a performer about just going for it when they sing the Star Spangled Banner. Perhaps it's some mixture of the crowd around them with the swell of patriotism that makes singers push their limits to sometimes disastrous results. 
That has to explain actor Clint Bowers, who had one of the most cringe-inducing final notes in his performance of the anthem at an NBA game. Poor dude really thought he was gonna hit the high note. But instead, his voice cracked and warbled all over the place. But we guess kudos to him for really committing? Number 14, Christina Aguilera. The Super Bowl stage is home to classic American suspense, but sometimes the Greek masks of comedy and drama make an appearance. In 2011, the illustrious Christina Aguilera began a heart-wrenching rendition of the national anthem, only to remix the vocals by the fourth line. What so proudly we watched at the twilight's last dreaming. Like a true pro, the Grammy award-winning singer moved on with bravery. But the audience experienced a collective deja vu moment and wondered if it was all a dream directed by Christopher Nolan. Number 13, Cat De Luna. Performing the anthem at a major game can be a great way for an aspiring pop star to broaden their fan base. At least, that's the best case scenario if they kill it. Oh, say, can you see? Unfortunately for Cat De Luna, she got her big chance to perform at a Monday Night Football game back in 2008, and most likely lost fans rather than gained new ones. She gave a very divified performance of the song, complete with vocal runs and matching finger wagging. DeLuna had the confidence of Aretha Franklin, but did not exactly have the vocals to back it up. The crowd was not kind and ended up booing her by the song's end. <laughs> Number 12, Alexis Normand. At the 2013 Memorial Cup, a jazz singer from Saskatchewan, Canada, scattered her way to national anthem infamy. Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous Despite a strong opening line, Alexis Norman's vocal confidence quickly transformed to sheer confusion as she attempted to collect herself and move forward with grace. What happened next was the creation of a new language, consisting of part mumbling and part singing, only to be followed up with a powerful rendition of the national anthem's final lines. Number 11, Steven Tyler. Steven Tyler may be a rock legend, but even legends have their off days. Performing the national anthem at the Indy 500, Steven started off nicely by doing a little harmonica riff before he started singing. Oh, say can you see? But as soon as he opened his mouth, it went downhill pretty quickly. It was a bit too rock and roll, and he sounded more like he was screaming rather than singing for much of the performance. Oh, Towards the end, he slid into a particularly egregious note that sounded like he was fighting off an assailant, not singing the nation's most important song. We feel bad for all the ears in the stadium that day. Number 10, Misha Bruger Gossman. Sometimes you have to wonder who's booking the talent for these performances. What so proudly we hailed. It's not too often that we hear an operatic version of the Star Spangled Banner or O Canada at a sporting event. And that is for good reason. And At a 2012 Senators vs. Penguins game, opera singer Misha Bruger Gossman gave one of the most dramatic renditions of both songs when she belted them out in her full over the top style. It was clear that she was a classically trained singer, but you have to know your audience. God, Overly drawn out, she made it feel less like the start of a sporting event and more like a brand of cruel and unusual punishment. Number 9, Cuba Gooding Sr. Test. He's the lead singer of The Main Ingredient and the father of an Academy Award winning actor. So, what happened to this experienced performer in 2008? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. This awkward theatrical production of How High Can You Go featured outstretched arms and squeaky pitching. 
along with a butchering of the lyrics. And the rocket's reckless, the bomb's bursting in air, At one point, Cuba Gooding Sr. attempts to rally the audience with an innovative pacing technique. But unfortunately, his dynamic pronunciation flipped the script on the thespian affair. Commenters were right to wonder if he had a bus to catch. Number 8. Carolyn Marcel Whether it's a lyrical mishap or a vocal disaster, performers understand that the show must always go on. Carolyn Marcel forgot the lyrics not once but twice prior to a 2004 exhibition hockey game between the USA and Canada, and apologized before leaving the ice. However, just a few moments later, Marcel returned with written lyrics for a shot at redemption only to suffer an embarrassing backwards tumble and literal fall from grace. As the audience pondered what else could possibly go wrong, Marcel swiftly made her exit and called it a night. Number 7. Madison Rising This band was doomed from the start. Before Madison Rising even began to play, the announcer at a 2014 NASCAR race introduced them as America's most patriotic rock band, a big claim for anyone to make. Sing, can you see? What started off as a slow but fairly run-of-the-mill rendition took on a whole new life when the bass kicked in, and they attempted to turn the national anthem into a rollicking rock and roll song. Not that this hasn't been done successfully before, Jimi Hendrix anyone, but this particular version was a resounding flop. In the rocket track, the bomb's bursting in Too aggressive and just tonally off, the performance was proof that sometimes it's just best to stay in your lane. Number 6. Jesse McCartney When you're a professional singer, one of the lowest bars to clear is knowing the words to the song you're performing. But time and time again, we've seen performers let that get the best of them. By the dawn's early And stars. That is exactly what happened with singer and actor Jesse McCartney, who completely skipped a line while singing the national anthem at the 2009 NASCAR Pepsi 500. From the get-go, he seemed nervous and timid, unlike his usual stage presence. We don't know what was going on with him, but it had to be bad to completely flub it like that. All the land of the free. Number 5. Ezra Harris While some of America's most prestigious singers prepare for the bright lights of television, others simply adhere to the call of duty. While so hell is lies, at the last gleaming road track. At a 2006 police memorial ceremony in Chattanooga, Tennessee, Ezra Harris was asked to perform and became a YouTube sensation with his unique rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Bombs bursting in air gave to the night that the stars were still there. As the cameras rolled, the deputy seemed aware of his lyrical predicament, but continued on with a freestyle melody. For one shining moment, an amused colleague attempted to sing along, only to realize that Mr. Harris was playing by his own roles. Number 4. Dennis Casey Parks Confidence can go a long way in selling a performance. And if Dennis Casey Parks brought nothing else to his rendition of O Canada, it was that. With growing hearts we see the rise. In 1994, the Canadian Football League tried to expand the league with new American-based teams like the Las Vegas Posse. God keep our land glorious and free. For a game against Saskatchewan, Parks, a lounge singer, was chosen to sing the opening anthems, but too bad he never listened to the Canadian song beforehand. He made it sound like the Christmas Carol O Tannenbaum, which stunned Canadians in the crowd. The... Parks became a laughingstock, but two weeks later he redeemed himself by singing it correctly at another game. Number 3. Carl Lewis Olympic athletes become national heroes through commitment and excellence, but their dedication to performance doesn't always translate to the mic. Oh. 
On one fateful day in 1993, Carl Lewis stunned NBA fans, along with Michael Jordan, by delivering a confused spoken word rendition complete with crowd integration and a thorough restructuring of the Francis Scott Key classic. And the Rockets, uh oh. I'll make up for it now. While the enthusiasm of Lewis was off the charts, his general understanding of the national anthem earned him a collective boo. Number 2. Roseanne Barr Truly one of America's greatest mysteries, this comedian was booked to perform the national anthem at a 1990 Major League Baseball game and shocked the world with her brash intonations. <laughs> Despite a lyrically sound interpretation, the rushed style and aggressive voice of Roseanne Barr became an early internet sensation. With each increasingly exaggerated note, Jack Murphy Stadium roared with boos, and the performance became a perfect example of how not to perform the Star Spangled Banner. But as a wise man once said, you get what you pay for. Number 1. Fergie it's not that Fergie is a bad singer, or even that she didn't hit most of her notes. It's more like, what the heck was she thinking? What's so proudly way you? At the 2018 NBA All-Star Game, for whatever reason, she decided to perform the song with a jazzy arrangement, complete with scatting. Instead of mixing it up and creating a new classic, the result was a weird, sexual rendition of the song that had players and spectators straining to keep from laughing. And the home. Her version was breathy and seductive, the polar opposite feelings the national anthem should inspire. She got roasted on social media and apologized that her performance didn't, quote, strike the intended tone. Hey, the reason I was smiling <laughs> is because I love the national anthem so much. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.